All right, guys, welcome back into another NFL video. Going to be the first one bringing in Hazi in here for you. It's going to be more of a betting focus, so he's going to be more the star of the show. I'm just going to talk him through some of the picks and tell him if they're good or not, pretty much, or if I agree. But he's going to be the star of the show here. So, Hazi, um, I'll just have you kick off the show. Yeah, we're going to have a, a live show more up your alley on Sunday morning for DFS-wise last-minute plays or, or lineup changes or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, like you said, just – point spreads and maybe some last minute future odds before before everyone starts playing their games this Sunday. Um, yeah, so we can start it right off in the NFC North uh, since it's just the first one on my page, actually. <laughs> Bears at the Lions. Lions two and a half point favorites. Oh, man. Like, I, I know the Lions were 3-0 and last year where, or whatever the case was with Matthew Stafford as their quarterback. I know there's a lot of hype around this team, but you know, they lost their best cornerback in um, Darius Slay to the Eagles. They traded him there. He wasn't happy with the way things were being run. I mean, I, I Mitchell Trubisky, I know he's not the greatest quarterback, but, I mean, that defense is still elite. And, you, you know, I think with a guy behind him like Nick Foles that, you know, is pushing for that starter job, maybe that'll push Trubisky to, to play a little bit better because I know yesterday there was those memes of, Watson and Mahomes sitting together on the bench. And it's like, can you believe they, they picked Trubisky ahead of us? But, you know, they still got a good run game with Montgomery and three Cohen, and it's a divisional game. So I like the Bears plus two and a half this week. Ah, that's – see, one one thing, though, real quick. Mahomes and Watson did not play that good last night. They were, had some really bad throws mixed in there. It was kind of it's kind of yeah. a bad day to try to meet Mitchell Trubisky because they all have throwing accuracy issues, especially was, last night. But it was nice to see some fans in the in the stands, though. Like, it was like, a little bit of cheering and stuff. A little bit of normalcy again, but yeah, yeah. So you, you like the Bears or the Lions? No, I like the Lions, man. Um, they're kind of my team this year, though. I kind of I would bet them to make the playoffs. The whole uh, Kenny Galladay injury does kind of worry me some. It's most likely he's going to be out, but you know, I got my Wisconsin Badger boy Quintus Cephas ready to step up. I don't know, if there could be like a player prop though honestly like i would bet if it was like 30 yards i'd probably bet the over on that for quintus cephas there probably is not going to be anything like that but i think i would because if kenny galladay's out i think he's going to be the guy that steps up for some jump balls but i don't know you know you're talking about Darius slay obviously they brought in jeff akuda i thought he looked like a just a natural star and ready for the nfl i don't, know, I don't like trubisky the offense for the bears should be a little bit better I don't know, I'm just going with the Lions, two and a half spread. See, the thing for me is, like, I think the Lions are just going to beat them by 10 points or so. You think it'd be a little bit closer? or Yeah, I, I, usually divisional games, no matter how bad their team is, they're always much closer than, than you expect. You know, three points, I could totally see this being a field goal game one way or the other. So, Yeah, I do kind of think this is going to be low scoring. The over and under I'm seeing is 34. What do you, yeah. what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I got 42 actually. So if you can grab 34, I mean, I'd hammer the over that that's a very low scoring game and I expect them to put up some points, especially because the defense hasn't really had any time to, to have any preseason games or whatever. The offense is such an advantage. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of goes both ways there. Uh, the bears will be with David Montgomery. It looks like as well. So, which is good for my fantasy football team because I got him a decent amount, but do yeah, you want to move on better than last year? So do you want to move on to the next game then? Yeah. What do we got? Packers, uh, Vikings. Cleveland at Baltimore. I like Cleveland this year. You know, I've been, I don't know if I told you this, but I told my buddies, like, I could totally see Baltimore going eight and eight this year, nine and seven, and barely getting in or missing the playoffs. I think that they're completely overrated. You, they, you saw what they happened. I think it was either week two or week four at home against the Browns last year. They got absolutely crushed. We saw what happened in the playoffs against Tennessee down the, you know, they had to rely on Lamar Jackson to throw the ball, and that's obviously not his strong suit. So uh, I think that when this team falls behind, uh, they're they're not the greatest. And I think it's just an extra – it's a whole year of tape that these defenses have on Lamar Jackson that they didn't have last year, and they have all the offseason to adjust for him. So I like the – I think the Browns can win that game outright, to be honest with you, especially because they won there last year. I expect the Browns to be better this year. And uh, a whole touchdown on the road, yeah, I'm going to take a, a division rival in Cleveland that I think is much better this year and give me the seven points. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that game is going to be a lot closer than probably most people think it's going to be, kind of for the same reasons you laid out. It's like, yeah, Lamar Jackson played lights out last year, but also he did get a little bit exposed, I guess, if you will, in the playoffs. So I agree with that approach. And also the Browns. I mean, on paper, say what you want, they're still one of the best teams on paper with Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, yeah. probably 
top five running backs in the league, if you will. And then obviously Jarvis Landry, who's one of the most disrespected receivers in the league. Then OBJ. OBJ should have a better year. And they brought in Austin Hooper, who I don't think is that great. I thought he was a little bit overhyped. Yeah, I agree. But, but we st- know how much the fans key likes using tight ends. We, we saw what he did with Kyle Rudolph in Minnesota. Exactly. And from the U, David <laughs> Njoku. That's a two-headed monster at tight end. That's I mean, you're going to have Njoku. You could potentially have Njoku. Uh, Austin Hooper, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry on at the same time, and then Chubb in the backfield, or you know, it's like that. Those are like a lot of weapons that you know you're going to get some mismatches. So yeah, uh, I like the Browns a lot. All right, we're on the same page there. Uh, and your team now. Next up, the Green Bay Packers right. and the uh, Minnesota Vikings. My buddies, I got two good buddies. One's a Vikings fan, one's a Packers fan. Uh, and he was saying. You know, could the Vikings win the Super Bowl? And he's like, if everything goes right, I think they have a chance. But they're going to need to get healthy on the O-line, which they're not right now. Um, and, and we saw the two-headed monster in the Smith brothers last year with Green Bay, how much havoc they wreaked. And again, it, it's a team that went 13-3 and three last year. You know, they, they didn't get any worse in the offseason. You know, I know everyone was talking about uh, Jordan Love and um, uh, A.J. Dillon in the first two picks and how they weren't addressed any needs. But, you know, like I said, they're – Team that went 13 3 last year. They beat Minnesota twice last year. So, uh, and I don't understand why. I mean, I can I can understand why they're they're underdogs, but I mean, I think that's because a lot of people just like hammering the home team in a divisional game. But I'm definitely going to take the Packers and the points uh, in this game because I think they're the better team. And I think they got the better quarterback. They have, uh, I think they're they're neutralized at the running back game. I think Aaron Jones and Dalvin Cook are both exceptional. Um, and you know they both have star number one receivers. I think it's going to be the other uh, the other players are kind of equal each other out too. The two, three, and four wide receivers, and then you, what's the biggest mismatch is is the quarterback play. And I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers all day long. Yeah, I mean, honestly, between like the first three games that we've had, this is the one that sticks out to me the most. I would hammer this like crazy. I mean, the Packers are going to destroy the Vikings here. I know I'm a little bit of a homer there coming from the Packers side of the ball, but your buddy summed it up pretty well. It's like for if everything goes well with the Vikings, sure, they could make the Super Bowl, but that's not going to happen. They're a couple injuries away from being irrelevant. I think they're going to be playing for maybe six wins this year. I, I don't know if you've seen the yeah. videos with him, but I got my buddy um, Isaac. He goes by Beers with Brooks now, or, well, Brooks now, but he also does a segment on Instagram, Beers with Brooks. Might have him on here to do bets with Brooks occasionally too just because he has that bet MGM thing. But anyways, he's a Vikings fan. He kind of – it's pretty good at gauging specifically the NFC North. And he thinks the Vikings are not going to make the playoffs. He thinks it's, it's going to be the Packers. And so the big takeaway from that is that you got a Vikings fan kind of thinking that it's not going to be their year. I don't know. I, I don't see the Vikings getting better from last year. I just don't see that happening. Sure, they tried to made some adjustments at the corner and safety positions, but I still think yeah. they're going to be poor. And honestly, I think this is going to be like a double-digit game. <laughs> On the websites do you that you play on, can you give them some points or not? Yeah, you can tease them and stuff like that. Obviously, at, uh, at lower odds, but if I mean, I think I think it's standard across the board, a dollar ninety, whatever the spreads are for for what they release, and then it goes down significantly from there. But well, like yeah, if you um, put the Packers at like plus six, yeah, I, I mean, if you want, I would do something like that, I think honestly, yeah, I think and it's I mean, a touchdown your, more. Your buddy right. being the uh, the Packers. Um, uh, Vikings fans were like the, the Vikings are also um, eight and a half wins this year. So I could totally see them being below that. Oh, I, um, honestly, they're one injury away from like yeah. cook. Well, not cook Masson's decent, but like Kirk getting like a little bit injured. Um, Adam Thielen getting injured. Justin Jefferson's kind of seeming like, I don't want to say it, but uh, oh, what was his name? Now Laquan Treadwell. We're at the Laquan Treadwell. Yep. First I, round bust. Hype out of camp is not looking too good for him. So we'll. So see. you wanted the Packers to win by a touchdown, or? Yeah, I would say the Packers are going to win by. Yeah, a minus touchdown. six and a half for the Packers is paying three thirty. So yeah. if you think they're gonna, think if uh, they're gonna have a really good um, day, then uh, I would totally bet them. Well, it, it's it's the same system as well. One more year yeah. in it. That's just yep. that's just helping them out. Yep. Uh, we're in total agreement there. Next on the list is Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Uh, I mean, uh, Trevor Lawrence is looking to make that uh, uh, income uh, tax free there in, in North Florida and Jacksonville. They're going to probably be the worst team in the league um, this year. Personally, for me, I, I have three picks in Survivor Pool. Um, one of them this week is going to be on Jacksonville just because I've talked to you about this about being dead last in, in DFS. You, 
you know Indianapolis is going to be probably this Sunday the biggest bet team in in terms of survivor picks. So if somehow Jacksonville can get it done, you you a get them out of the way because they're going to be the worst team in the league. I wouldn't want to count on them in week 14 when it's you and a couple of people left to get a win. And at the same time, you knock uh, a lot of people out of their survivor pools. But if we're going strictly off the spread, I know I talk a lot about just now about it being in the division, blah, blah. But um, Indianapolis, I think, is going to win the FC South. Indi- uh, Houston looked terrible yesterday. They just cannot stop a nosebleed. Um, Philip Rivers is a complete upgrade from quarterback since Andrew Luck. Um, you know, you got a two-headed monster now in Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. Uh, you got T.Y. Hilton still who has uh, a few good years left. And, and defensively, you know, um, Darius Leonard, their linebacker, who was, I think he, was, I think he might have been at an FCS school or, or Division three school or something like that. He's an absolute stud at middle linebacker. Uh, yeah, I just think Jacksonville with Gardner Minshew Magics uh, has long gone. And I, I just think, don't think they have any answers offensively. I know they have Jay Gruden now, but, I mean, you can only – can only work with what you got and that's not much for jacksonville so i like indianapolis minus eight on the road yeah yeah i agree with that for sure um don't really have to touch on that anymore the only concerns is if it comes down to two minute warning and philip rivers has to come up clutch that would be the only only (laughs) worry he's like my favorite quarterback and it's just so miserable to watch him sometimes but uh One more quick thing with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I've been hyping this guy up a decent amount on Twitter. Uh, James Robinson, he was a uh, undrafted free agent out of, I think it was Illinois State, the Red, yep. the Redbirds, Red Car- yep. know, something that's, like that. But Yeah, that's an FCS school. I saw it today too yeah, on Twitter. But, uh, so I really liked his film. He reminds me of someone kind of like Terrence West where it's just like he's a good like NFL player. He, he's not going to be anything great. But if there's some sort of rushing total for him or anything like that, I would bet – probably up to 70 so if it's below that yeah don't bet it if it's above that you're good to go or my only concern with that would be just in terms of if they're down 17 nothing early i i think the and jay green was talking about how he does he does a lot of things well so i'm assuming that means catching the ball out of the backfield so if they're down early i would expect him uh really not to get that many touches uh hand handoff wise but total uh, yards sorry, the, the total yards prop exactly i was just about to say if there's a prop like that then yeah i could totally see uh, that being a good bet raiders at the panthers man i know it's week one so it's a little bit different but west coast teams traveling east coast usually don't don't do too well especially the chargers we saw them struggle a lot during philip rivers tenure there um I know Carolina is supposed to be bad this year, and I had the number one overall pick in my fantasy draft the other night, and like I really didn't want it because I said if I had anything from obviously second to twelfth, we have a twelve-man team. I was taking Clyde Edwards-Alaire, like I was taking him over <laughs> Barkley, over Elliott, because I think yep. that with Andy Reid there, it's just the options are endless for minutes. I, I'm always hesitant to take like obviously McCaffrey's a stud, but coming off a career year, like obviously it's not likely he's going to repeat that again, and. You know, having him number one overall is kind of tough. But be that as me, I I like Carolina in this game outright as well. Uh, I think the Raiders are a little bit overrated. I know Josh Jacobs is a good back, but you almost feel like John Gruden's just going to run him into the ground this year. And, and <laughs> Derek Carr's definitely been hit or miss. And listen, Teddy Bridgewater in the short time he's had as a starter in, in the NFL has been good. Also, learning behind Drew Brees for, I don't know if it was the last two years in New Orleans, but for sure last year. He's definitely picked up some things and has gotten better as a quarterback. They still got DJ Moore, uh, a receiver. Like I said, they have um, Christian McCaffrey in the backfield, obviously, uh, who can do more than just run the ball. Um, I think he had 19 total touchdowns last year, which is incredible. Uh, yeah, I mean, defensively, you lose Luke Keekley. Obviously, that's a huge loss in your linebacker course. But, yeah, I, I like Carolina's game, especially with them being at home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... See, I kind of go the other way. This is probably be one I would honestly just stay away from. Um, I actually do like the Raiders a little bit more, but it's kind of a toss-up to me. I think the point spread here is pretty spot on. Uh, it's pretty much a field goal game. I think Derek Carr is a much better quarterback than Teddy Bridgewater, though. It's just whether or not like Henry Ruggs and what Brian Edwards are ready to step up. That's a big question yeah. mark there. It's like if you have no passing threats, at least for the first couple of weeks while they're trying to figure it out, then it's going to be a rough start for them. I don't know, that's the biggest question there. But I do want to ask you a quick question about CMC. So a couple of years ago, I did 
I don't know, a stat breakdown of Le'Veon Bell. He was coming off like a 400 touch total season. And then pretty much the data that I was able to come up with was that once you get over like 380 total touches, the closer you are to like 400. And the more you go over that number, the more likely you are to get injured. I didn't forget what Christian McCaffrey had, but he's coming off of like three. For sure, man. He was the only guy they had. Yeah. But like, are you worried about him getting injured? Absolutely. This I'm year? Worried about, absolutely. I'm worried. And yeah. I, right after the draft was over, I literally sent a couple of messages like, who wants CMC? Yeah. Because, like, I know I could probably get two like stud number one receivers, uh, you know, probably maybe like Mark Andrews or something like that. Right. Because obviously there's people love Christian McCaffrey, but he's for sure one injury, like knock on wood for him and any player, but mm-hmm. like, especially that running back position. So, so fragile, you never know. But yeah, I, I totally agree. Remember a couple of years ago, Tom Brady was suspended for the first four games of the year, and everyone was like, "Oh, Arizona's gonna crush," because <laughs> uh, uh, it was the first week on the road too there in Arizona, which was a weird one. Um, and when you give Bill Belichick this amount of time to scheme for a game, uh, it doesn't matter who his quarterback is, because we saw what Jimmy Garoppolo did in that game, and I know. There are seven point favorites at home to the Dolphins, and the Dolphins have been trending. You know, they're they look like they're getting better, but for this week specifically, just with Bill Belichick having all this time to prepare for this week one specific game, I like New England a lot minus seven. I know it feels seems like a lot of points, especially in the division, and especially with Miami beating them last year in week seventeen to kind of screw over the Patriots for home field advantage. But uh, uh, just for this week, I, I really like the Patriots. So, quick question. Would that change if Edelman is limited at all? Um, it, it seems like it seems like he's a hundred percent. It seems like the Patriots are just milking it, but I'm just curious. Yeah, it just seems that like it, you know the whole mantra there is next man up type of mentality and Jacoby Myers. That would be it. <laughs> Myers, there you go. And that other that uh, that punt return guy who I can't even say his last name. Oh, the does it start with the O? Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. He's... <sighs> Preseason, see if it was preseason. If we had that, I would be all over oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I agree with it. Um, that, that's a tough one. I, I definitely agree with all the things you just said there. I don't know. For me, it kind of depends on Preston Williams' health as well because I think it's pretty easy to stop Devontae Parker alone. And then obviously, Jordan Howard, Matt Breida. We don't really know what to expect from those two just yet. So, yeah, I would say New England at, at that point spread, I would take them. Um, what about the over or under there? I see I got like 41 or maybe you got like 40. I have 42 on the dot. I think I would take the under here. Just throwing out there. I know it's really low, but I think I would. Yeah, I I, I don't – yeah. I, I would bet the under if I had if uh, if I had to pick one or the other. Okay. So my uh, And now it's my turn to pick my team here. The Jets at the Buffalo Bills in Orchard Park this week. Bills minus six and a half. I mean, the Jets have absolute house leaguers at wide receiver – uh, this week, uh, Denzel Mims is the Adam Gase pretty much says he's not going to play this Sunday. Braxton Berrios from again the University of Miami is going to be, you know, their slot guy. Jameson Crowder's their best receiver, but I mean he's a, a two at best, at best maybe on some teams in the NFL. Um, and I think the Bills defense just got exponentially better this off season. Um, yeah, Josh Norman isn't going to play, but Levi Wallace is an adequate replacement at cornerback too. Uh, you still got Trey White, who it's almost, I, I was listening to some people talk about it. It's kind of sucks that you have Trey White playing this game. Like obviously hopefully he stays healthy the whole year, but like you kind of neutralize Trey White in this game because there's no stud receiver that you have because in any other week, he's not going up against these, any of these receivers that are playing. He's going up against, a Julio Jones or whatever the case may be. So you can almost neutralize uh, Trey White out of the game. So uh, this real, real quick, just based on that yeah. point. So my buddy touched on a pretty good point in one of the podcasts when we were covering the Jets, pretty much saying that Jamison Crowder, when he goes up against division opponents, they don't really move their number one cornerbacks to, say, the slot, which is where Jamison Crowder operates a lot. Do you think, based on the points that you just said, that they would do that this week, or do you, you think he's going to stay on the outside and cover yeah. the Perryman? <laughs> Yeah, Trey White doesn't really move around, to be honest with you. So I expect him probably just to stay where he is, especially because I think Levi Wallace uh, is a good cornerback too. Yeah, so like for me personally, I have Jamison Crowder a ton in DFS just because of that point. Because, yes, he's their number one option. And, yes, the Bills defense is good. But he sh- he's at like 5.2 on drafting. So he should at least be able to get 10 DK points. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. no, no, 100%. And then we're going to Wash- uh, Philadelphia at Washington. Look. 
you, you look at the San Francisco 49ers and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of messed up. You, Kyle Shanahan was on the Reds. Uh, not, they're not there. Washington the football team coaching staff. Um, Sean McVay was, Sean McVay was on the Washington coaching staff. Like there was a, a shit ton of unbelievable head coach to let go from there. Be that as may, you look at what the 49ers did all first rounders on the defensive line. Same thing for the, for Washington. You got Chase Young, you got, um, is it Deron Payne that's on there? Uh, I think it's Deron Payne. I think they got they got a couple of Alabama guys on that D line. Uh, you know, you still got Adam Kerrigan, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but you know, they're building it the way the 49ers built it. And we saw the 49ers were trash um, for a few years there, and then all of a sudden they turned it around because they just you know more experience, more experience, more experience. And I think that's what the same thing with Washington this year. Terry McLaurin. Uh, was unbelievable last year. Dwayne Haskins has to be better than he was last year. I expect him to. Alex Smith, God bless him. He's coming back from that gruesome injury. And, you know, if Dwayne Haskins doesn't perform, they can definitely throw Alex Smith in there. Uh, I, I think this game's going to be rather close. And, again, with Washington at home, and I know it's not – there's no crowd. There's not a substantial advantage. But just being in your own surroundings. Uh, and we saw the Eagles last year just – obviously, they were so unlucky to be that injured. But – I mean, they really don't impress me that much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Washington football team plus five and a half at home. Hmm. I'm definitely I'm taking the Eagles here. I don't know. I like Carson Wentz. I think he's gonna be the MVP this year. Um, I do agree with everything you said though about the Washington football team. Um, they're definitely a team on the rise. Do you know what their team total is by chance? I don't know if you have that pulled up because mm-hmm. if it's like four or less or like five or less, I would think about it because I could see them getting to six ones because they are on the rise, but that really depends on how much Washington over under five and a half. So I'd probably take the over there. Just no, I agree. They, they definitely are a team on the rise. I really do like Steven Sims jr. I like Terry McLaren and Logan Thomas. The tight end seems decent. The hype for Antonio Gibson. He does look good on film. It's just a matter of if they can put it together, but I will say for this one, the over, I got the over under at 42. I would take the over on that. I don't think there's going to be any defense played here. I think there's gonna be a ton of touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, seven games left here, five on uh, Sunday. We got the Seattle Seahawks going east to the Atlanta. <laughs> like uh, we just talked about with the um, the Raiders going to Carolina. Seattle's in Atlanta. I know there's a lot of hype around Atlanta this year, but I really don't see it. It, it. Matt Ryan looks exactly like Eli Manning towards the end of his career, where there's just really little to, to no mobility. Uh, you know, as soon as the it's pocket Brady. collapses, yeah, the, as soon as the pocket collapses, you just – you know, it's pretty much the plays over. I know they got Todd Gurley, but I mean, the guy has arthritis in his knees and he's 25 years old. So, or 26 years old, uh, obviously he's got Julio Jones, but you did lose a weapon in Austin Hooper who did go to Cleveland. We touched on him. Um, and I think just Seattle, and I, I think I touched on this with you uh, in previous episodes. I think uh, the teams that are going to win this year are just going to be like structurally very sound from the top to bottom, you know, strong head coach, strong leadership on the team. And that's exactly what Seattle is with Pete Carroll and, and Russell Wilson, especially. So I, I think they're going to be well prepared for every game they play. And I think that I think personally, this is like the lock of the week. I think they're going to smash the Falcons this week. Yeah. I would say if you want to do a parlay, do Seahawks, do Packers, and maybe one more other team that we're going to touch on. I don't have to touch on that too much more. You, you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Um, next one, chargers at Bengals. This one's interesting. Yeah. I, I know the chargers are minus three, uh, this week, but I, you know, if you didn't want to play the spread over a 42, I mean, the Cincinnati is not going to stop anybody. I know Tyrod Taylor's Chargers quarterback, former Bills quarterback. I have no clue how they made the playoffs that year, but yeah, Cincinnati is not going to stop anybody. The Chargers are out with Dur- Derwin James is out. The Bengals, you know, they, they're going to put up points. Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, AJ Green, they're going to put up points, especially with Joe Burrow now at quarterback. So, it, you know, I would maybe lay off the the point spread but definitely hammer the over under of 42 yeah this uh, this one's interesting to me I, I this is probably the one i'm looking forward to most to watch just because of all the pieces in there i got a shit ton of austin eckler as well for best you know, balls and fantasy yeah yep. i think i think he's going to be cmc light this year honestly or even sure. just cmc but yeah I, i'm looking forward to watching this game i don't really want to bet on it to ruin it essentially but yeah i don't know it's difficult because joe burrow with rookie quarterbacks, you see them struggle sometimes, or you see them dominate, and then eventually they regress back. It's you don't know what to expect. So, you know, yeah. if you're for fantasy football purposes, maybe pick up Chargers D because you should make a couple of mistakes there. Should be a lot to get at least five points. Yeah. Uh, no, no clue what's going on, on my computer right now, but uh, here we go. Um, 
Cardinals at 49ers this Sunday, 49ers minus six and a half at home. Uh, look, I, I know they got a lot better this year, Arizona. They did. I, I don't know. I don't think they beat them last year, but I think they took them to overtime or, or really late in the game there in, uh, in San Francisco last year. Uh, I, I personally think San Francisco is going to be pissed off with with the way they lost that Super Bowl, and they're going to come out really hungry this year. And I know, generally speaking, quarterbacks have better second years, and obviously adding DeAndre Hopkins is going to be huge for them. But I think defensively, San Francisco is still unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to take a little bit of a step this year throwing the football. Uh, so I like San Francisco minus 6.5 this week. Yeah, I would agree with that. I do think the Cardinals are going to be a little bit better, I think. Murray's going to take the next step. And I will say another player prop, uh, Dan Arnold, if you can find one out there, I would cap it at um, probably 30, 30 receiving yards. Um, I don't know. I think he's going to go over that, but it's kind of a dangerous one there, but I kind of like that tight end for him. He should be the starting tight end. I don't know how much snaps he's going to get, maybe around 40% because obviously they like to do that three receiver sets, but I don't mind that bet. But I agree, Niners. I think the game of the week for, for most people um... – Tampa Bay at New Orleans, seeing Tom Brady in a new uniform for the first time in his career. Uh, I personally stayed away from Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, guys, especially Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, because I think we're going to be fighting for a lot of the same balls this year. Um, you know, but we saw Minnesota kind of torch them in the playoffs area, putting up 28 points or whatever it was. Uh, I really don't understand the hype with New Orleans defense. Um, and I think Bruce Arians is one of the brightest offensive minds in the game, and he doesn't really get that respect as Sean Payton does. Mm -hmm. I like Tampa Bay a lot uh, in this game, plus three and a half. Uh, I think offensively they have way more weapons than New Orleans. Um, quarterback play-wise, you know, Tom Brady's got a stronger arm still than Drew Brees. We saw what happened either it was last year or the year before when kind of Drew Brees jammed his shoulder on Thanksgiving. Uh, he, he wasn't really the same quarterback, and, and you know, he's getting up there in age. He already had shoulder problems early in his career, so I really like Tampa Bay plus three and a half this week. Yeah, I don't know. This is a game that I would stay away from. I just kind of want to see it from Tom Brady first, and I kind of want to see how the Saints look with a legit receiver number two with Emmanuel Sanders being there. And then obviously with the Bucks, uh, Mike Evans is outside. That worries me a little bit as well. I, don't, I just kind of want to stay away from it. Once again, another player prop that I like would be Scotty Miller, kind of the same thing around probably 40 receiving yards. Um, I'd bet the over on that. Yeah, you love those player props, eh? I just, you know, sometimes there's value there. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Got to take Cowboys advantage are, of what you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. hundred percent. I mean, you don't have to build, you don't have to win a million dollars overnight unless it's this Sunday <laughs> when I had a free $5 ticket and I threw it into DraftKings. 10 minutes of research threw my team in there, not changing it. Dude, so, that's how you screw things up. So real quick, I had a showdown lineup that got fifth place and in PGA on round one. And it was like one of the ones I did last minute. I'm like, oh, I, sh I should try this out. Freaking got fifth place. I'm like, Jesus Christ, come on. Here you go. That's what you got to do from now on, honestly. Try it for a week, see what happens. Yeah. Rams are a new stadium for the Rams this year. It's going to be weird because they built it. They're too close to the – I think they're too close to LAX. So what they had to do was they had to actually have – the the football field is below the uh, is below the surface of everything else in that city. I did because, not realize that. Yeah, because the bu certain buildings because they're right beside the old LA Coliseum, whatever where the Kings played, obviously. So the building can't be a certain height that close to the airport, obviously with planes there. So they actually dug underground. The football field will be underground. So I don't know how that's going to affect balls being thrown at night, especially how kicks are going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see like over the course oh. of sixteen games how different it is. But uh, I think the Cowboys are just a completely better team, and the and the the shine has worn off of, of Sean McVay, and it's it's kind of like what I was saying about Baltimore, like how the Rams were like unstoppable with Sean McVay at the beginning with Jared Goff, and then teams figured him out. Um, I think it's the same thing here, and I think the Cowboys got better, and I think that they they, they should have easily won the NFC East last year. I mean, I don't know how they screwed it up, but adding Ceedee Lamb offensively, they're going to be even better. Leighton Van Der Esch was out for so many weeks last year too. I think the uh, the, cow, uh, the the Cowboys at minus two and a half. I think they again. I think they smashed the the, the Rams this week. Yeah, I could, I could see that. Um, this is one that I think I would just stay away from personally. Um, a little bit worrisome. I will say Van Jefferson, Cam Makers. I'm looking forward to watching those two. Those are two of my favorite rookies, and the Rams got them. So I'm a closet Rams fan this year. I did draft Darnell Henderson too this year because uh, just McVay did say he's going to rotate running back. So. It's interesting he says that now after giving Todd Gurley all that money. But anyways. <laughs> he learned his lesson. Yep. 
Uh, I think this could be a – like, I hate picking teams to win the Super Bowl uh, in the AFC, but I think this team could be a, a dark horse of, of sorts. Pittsburgh defensively was unbelievable last year. They were fighting for a playoff spot up until the last couple of weeks with Duck Hodges at quarterback. Uh, getting Ben Roethlisberger back uh, I think is going to do so many things for that team offensively. Minus six at the Giants. I know Jason Garrett's now there, and there's some kind of some buzz about the Giants this year, but uh, – uh, I still, you know, I think the Giants need to get a little bit better defensively still. I think they need another year or two before they really start contending again. So I'll take the Steelers minus six on the road against the Giants. Yeah, defensively, they're just so stout there. Um, have a full year of film on, you know, Daniel Jones too. I, I expect him to be slow down there. I agree there. The, the only worry I have with the Steelers is offensive production. Obviously with James or James Conner healthy, that should help out. But I am a little bit worried about offensive production for them this year. Just they don't have a defined number one receiver personally. This is a hot take. I think James Washington is the most talented. He's definitely the least consistent, though. Juju's got to step up and be the player that he was a couple of years ago. And then Deontay Johnson, I thought that was just kind of a splash in the pan. But they all showed moments. They just need more consistency there. So I'm a little bit worried for them season long, but they could be one of those teams at the end of the year who gets hot, puts it together, maybe a wild card team that runs the table like the Packers did. What was it? 20s. I forget the year now, but kind of the similar situation. Yeah, where they had the pieces together. It's just a matter of putting it together. The last game of the the card, Tennessee at Denver. Uh, So real quick, this line is complete BS if Cortland Sun is ruled out. Just throwing that out. Yeah, I know. That's – uh, I think he's still not a, – has he been officially ruled out of the game? No, I, I th- it's only like an AC shoulder sprain, so yeah, yeah. he probably will play. But if he does get ruled out, I'm not touching it. Yeah, exactly. I, like, I right, think that – I would touch it. So. I, 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 was, I, was, I was feeling Denver this year, to be honest with you, a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, you've got Jerry Judy there. Cortland Sutton had an unbelievable rookie year last year. I think they're going to be a lot better. Uh, you just saw Hamler too? Yeah, yeah, exactly. From Penn State, you saw how much better they were with, with a guy who could actually move in the pocket as opposed to Joe Flacco. Um, but you know, I'll still take Denver this week at home. Uh, you get, you get three points plus three against Tennessee who every time Ryan Tannehill gets a big deal from a team, he, he, he starts to stink. And again, I don't, I don't trust Ryan Tannehill. Uh, so, so give me, give me the Broncos plus three this week to attend the card. That is interesting. So personally, I actually think Ryan Tannehill has been one of the most underrated quarterbacks out there. Yeah, sure. He's not great. He wasn't a first round draft pick great type player, but he's just been very solid. He's pretty much Alex Smith. Just, I don't see it a little bit better, a little bit better rushing ability. Maybe. I don't know. They're pretty much the same player, but I kind of like Tannehill. It's honest. I, I can't touch this game. If Cortland Sun's out, if he plays and is healthy, I would probably take Denver. Just like you said. Also, yeah. I really like Melvin Gordon and uh, Philip Lindsay. That's a great split. They're going to be the same as the chargers. Going to be a defensive a battle though, dude. What do you think yeah. about that? 41 over and under that seems. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely bet the under, but like you said, I would definitely, this, this line would be dependent on whether Cortland Sutton plays or not. Cause if he doesn't play, then I'm not touching it, but um yeah, so, if he does play, I like the Broncos. So your lock bet is going to be the Seahawks at, what was it, two and a half or three? And the Falcons, yeah. And then mine is the Packers. I would actually move them up to, like, plus six. Give Minus yourself six. a nice little bonus money there. Minus six, Eric. Come Sorry, on. whatever. Sorry. Sorry. Minus is, yeah, they have to win by that much, plus they just got to cover that. Apologies. Yeah, whatever. Just Come on, man. Come on. Increase no, I'm, I'm your totally profitability bad. there. Yes, Absolutely. You already won a showdown slate this week, like you said, or came fifth. Fifth. Another another good week on su- another good day of betting on Sunday, and you can have yourself a nice little uh, nice little income there, dude, for sure. And like even the showdown slates too, those are fun to attack for. Uh, Absolutely. And if I will touch on that a little bit on the live stream, I'm sure as well. Uh, what what time are we going? At ten thirty. Ten thirty CT, eleven thirty Eastern. Yeah, that'll be a good time. Probably an hour. Get yep. that together. Get those plays out to you guys. So just real quick, like I said, James Robinson standing out and Quintus Cephas could be some value plays for now. Scotty Miller as well. We'll have to wait on that news to come out. It has been interesting, the news that's already breaking, that's already changed into the slate. So I had uh, Kenny Galladay scheduled in, in my cash build. Got to change that. Got to change that. Maybe Marvin <laughs> Jones gets put in there. Ooh. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. What about you? Yeah, man, I can't wait for Bill's football again. Football is my favorite sport to watch. Uh right ahead of golf so i i and i i just love it i can't get enough of nfl football especially college football too this year it's gonna be a little bit different but nfl and, and college football sign me up all day long man i'm gonna miss the saturday afternoons with a little bit of a chill watching 
oh, the no. Badgers in my hometown, not my hometown, but my current town, Madison, Wisconsin. That's Badgers against, you know, shit show Rutgers, just shitting them, shit pumping them 65 to three at half. Just so, some of the nine to five fans are about to love this. Cause I, I know there's a few from Minnesota just destroying the Gophers, just oh, maintaining yeah. the trophy there for all, but like one year in the last 25 years, just, yeah, you gotta you gotta let them hang on to whatever hope they have left, right? Hey, roll the boat. Am I right? <laughs> good for them. Yep, well, whatever. They had one right. good year. I got your send off. So, all right, guys, we just got done beating the house with Hazi, and I'm Eric Pauzine. Let's keep cashing, guys. We're out. <laughs>